Hello, and welcome to your Northeast Minnesota labor market update for March of 2021. My name is Carson Gorky, and I am the Department of Employment and Economic Development's Regional Labor Market Analyst for the Northeast Region. Over the next couple minutes, I will provide the latest unemployment and jobs updates, share some insight from local workforce professionals, and highlight some trends in jobs posting. First, let's take a look at the unemployment and labor force trends. The unemployment rate in Northeast Minnesota fell to 5.5% in February from 6.0% in January, a decline that coincided with an increase in the labor force for the second month in a row. Despite this positive trend, the region's labor force was still 3.3% lower than in February of 2020, but grew at a faster pace than in all other regions of the state. Almost 2,000 workers joined or rejoined the labor force in February. Within the region, Lake and Cook counties saw the largest relative increases in their unemployment rates and the largest decreases in their labor forces since last February. Over the month, the unemployment rate dropped in all seven counties and the labor force expanded in Carleton, Lake, and St. Louis counties. For the jobs update, the Duluth metro area added over 2,200 jobs in February, continuing the climb that began at the start of the year. However, despite this positive trend, total non-seasonally adjusted employment remains down 6.5% from February of 2020. That's almost 9,000 more jobs that need to be added to reach pre-pandemic employment levels. The seasonal mining, logging, and construction sector fell just over 4% from January, and retail trade was off 1.6% after faring better than most sectors throughout 2020. On the other hand, leisure and hospitality added nearly 1,800 jobs, growing 17.7% from January, yet remained down almost 15% from the previous year. The other services and information sectors also remained down double digits over the year. Yet on the whole, the news is positive, as seven of 10 sectors added jobs in February, and the Duluth Metro grew the fastest of the six that were measured. To help round out the hard data that the Labor Market Information Office is known for, we also solicit observations from those doing workforce development in our communities. These workforce development stakeholders, be they employers, job counselors, or workforce development board members, are well positioned to provide useful perspective that often complement and underline trends while also applying a human lens to the stats. When asked whether they were seeing a worker shortage in the region, the overwhelming consensus was yes, but that the pressures were not felt evenly across occupations and industries. In fact, that is what the data showed us as well. The National Labor Exchange is a clearinghouse for job postings found on over 25,000 corporate career websites and state job banks. These postings provide a useful indicator of the estimated demand for workers by geography and job type. According to the NLX, as of mid-February, there were just over 3,500 active job postings in Northeast Minnesota. Many of these postings were for healthcare occupations such as nurses, nursing assistants, or home health and personal care aides. One third of all postings were for healthcare occupations. Retail and food preparation and serving workers were also highly represented. While job postings data tend to be quite variable and messy, they are nevertheless helpful when put into context. For example, while healthcare accounted for 33% of postings, only 5.5% of unemployment claims in mid-February were filed by healthcare workers. This mismatch indicates a demand for workers with healthcare skills and experience that is not necessarily met by the supply within the current local workforce. At the other end of the spectrum, there is construction and extraction, which accounts for almost 35% of unemployment claims in February, but only 1.3% of all active postings. This discrepancy is likely in part attributable to the seasonal slowdown of construction jobs. Perhaps an easier way to see the relationship between unemployment claims and job postings is to create a ratio, in this case, of unemployment claims over postings. A number greater than one indicates fewer postings or lower relative demand, and a number below one indicates more postings or demand relative to filed unemployment claims. 
you can see that healthcare practitioners and technical, computer and mathematical, business and financial operations, life physical and social science, and architecture and engineering, many occupations that have higher median wages and require higher levels of education, have smaller ratios, indicating potentially larger disconnects between employer needs and job seeker availabilities, skills, and preferences. There are, of course, many other variables at play, and jobs posting data, as I mentioned earlier, are not perfect. Not all postings are captured by NLX, and certain types of jobs are more likely to, to appear on websites, for example. However, these data provide a different look at the very real and complex challenges facing local employers and job seekers. And just what are we hearing from job seekers? When asked, many local workforce experts provided some additional insight on what job seekers and those out of the labor force are facing. Many challenges folks are facing remain directly related to the lingering pandemic. Many people are still concerned about the threat of the virus or are staying home to take care of family members, such as children. In addition, a tight housing market and unequal access to job opportunity information have complicated matters further for job seekers. For those reasons, increasing vaccinations and childcare assistance may go a long way to boosting confidence and freeing up parents to re-enter the workforce. So to sum it all up, we saw a second month of employment and labor force growth in Northeast Minnesota, yet many employers continue to struggle to find candidates. Supply and demand appear to vary by occupational group. And the public health crisis still overshadows and impacts potential workers' decisions to look for work or not. The hope is that increased immunizations continue to increase worker confidence and encourage more people to re-enter the labor force. For more information or to find the DEED Regional Analyst for your area, visit our website or contact me or any one of us seen here with your questions. We will be happy to help you access and understand the information and data you are looking for. Thank you and have a great day.